Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the vignetting option in Vegas Pro. As you can see, I've inserted these additional images on top of this video and the background of the image is fading into the video. As you can see, I've inserted this GIF on the corner here and it has a smooth fading into the background. I'm now going to demonstrate how to make this smoothing effect. Right, so here is the original video. Now you can see, in my case, I used a green screen and then I put a background there. Anyway, not important. I do have a video explaining how to do the green screen. All right, so to get that vignetted effect, what do you need to do? The first thing is insert another video track. So now you've got a new video track to work. Right, so now what I want to do is overlay this video with an image or a GIF. So I've located the image. Here it is. I'm just grabbing it across there. I've grabbed it across. And now if you have a look, can you see what it's done? It's just shoved it right over my video. So if I press play, look what's happening here. There it is, and then suddenly, boom, there's the image. Now, what I want to do is before I put it into the corner, I'm going to want to explain to you how to do that soft contrast or actually vignetting around this image. So you, what you want to do is you want to go to FX, and you want to choose something called soft contrast. Now that you've chosen soft contrast, I'm just going to uh, make the desktop area a bit bigger so you can see the effect. And uh, on the tab here, it says vignette. And here we go. Straight away, you can see it. It's got uh, the exterior effect. You can put transparent. Immediately, I'm getting that smooth, diffused effect. So you can choose uh, transparent. You can choose white. Now, why it's doing this is it's smoothing out into a white background. Imagine that, that behind this image, it was white. Therefore, it would be smoothing out into a white background. If it was black, can you see what is happening? It's smoothing out into a black background. So if you had black behind here then it would have a continuous black effect can you see there's the black option now if i wanted to black this entire screen all i'll do is insert a video track and i'm going to now lift that one there so this one is the top and i'm just going to insert a solid color so i'm going to just come here to my media generator i'm going to say solid color there's solid color and i'm going to find black and that's fine. And if you have a look at that now, can you see what I'm talking about? And if it was the white, you could just add a white background. But it would be silly in this case because, as you can see, my picture already has a white background. All right, so I'm going to remove this now and go back to showing you how to do the transparent vignette. All right, so what most people would do is use the transparent. And there you can see. Now, here is the strength. Can you see that when I reduce the strength, it brings it back to where it was. And when I increase the strength, look what is happening. Now, you might be wondering, like, how does it know to make it this size? Well, that is what the width and the height is for. Can you see there? I can widen the effect. Now, here it's at 100%. So I'm still seeing that defined border there. So if I reduce it, look at that. There we go. And then obviously the height, self-explanatory. So there you can change the height. Now the corner radius, you can see it brings in those corners so that it doesn't have that rectangular feature. It's got now around it. But you can also use the ellipse function there. You see the ellipse option. And then if you do you'll see that that ra corner radius has disappeared because you see with the rectangle, you can see you've got the corner radius. So it gives you a little bit of that curvature when you choose ellipse, it's no longer there. Now, what is X and Y position? Now, if you think about the center of your screen as the reference point, can you see that as I go X to the right, it's like I am shifting the entire effect to the right. And if I go X to the left, can you see I'm shifting all the way to the left and then the same with the Y but now in the vertical plane look at that and look at that why this is important is because if your image was not quite centered like I put in a centered image if you look at it that was quite fairly centered imagine my image was this one for example if you look there can you see that I would want to cut off more of the top and bottom so if I go to FX you can see I'm going to bring in soft contrast and now look I've got the soft contrast for this image and if I go to vignette can you see that I choose the transparent right now let's just uh, set this up there we go maybe it's like that and can you see now I can shift up the Y look at that now I can make it in the center there we go so now I've centered that white now you say all right I want to put this in the corner here now it gets a little bit more tricky and now I'm going to explain to you how to put this in the corner. I'm going to go back to this image and I'm going to bring up the soft contrast. There it is. 
and I'm going to put the effect on and there you can see the effect right now what I want to do is I want to put this into the bottom left corner now some people might try and use the pan or crop now I'm specifically showing you this so you don't run into this problem look what happens when I try and put this into the corner let's switch the effect off soft contrast is off and now I'm going to try put this into the corner There it's in the corner and now I'm going to try and put this effect on and now you're going to have this problem. Can you see that it becomes very challenging to try and get this right. You will be fiddling here for minutes and minutes and minutes and you'll, try, you'll find that this is not that easy anymore. And the reason being is it's still taking the effect from the center of the image. So it's best not to use the crop when you are trying to put the soft contrast around the edges rather use picture in picture so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now put this back I'm going to say restore and as you can see I've obviously stuffed up my settings there so I'm going to now go back to vignette and try to bring some of this back right there there and there Okay, and now what I want to do is I just want to put this on the bottom left of the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another effect. I'm going to go picture in picture rather. And here you'll see it, picture in picture. And look at that, it's much easier. See, now I can just grab the entire effect, the image with the effect. You see, the effect is still relative to this central point. Can you see now the picture in picture, that is the center. So even if I now come here and I try and start making changes, it's making the changes with respect to this frame so this is now my new frame and that's why it is showing me this green circle can you see there's that green circle and then obviously you can also resize this and do whatever you feel you you need to do all right so that is the for me the best way to do the soft background while also being able to shift this around your video right so there we go and now if you want to play the video you should be able to see that nice effect all right, I'm just smoothing in the edges and then let's play. And you can see there's the effect and you can see how smooth that is. Now, that is how you do the vignette option, but we never looked at the effect. I'm going to quickly explain to you what all of these are. Right, so I'm going to put the picture in picture off again and now I'm going to bring the screen back to the full size and I'm going to go through this one by one quickly. Now, if you have a look at the contrast, yes, there is the contrast. Can you see how if I increase the contrast, it's changing the layout of the picture, the way the picture looks. Now, if I show you the original of that picture, here is the original and you can see the highlights and the low lights. Now I'm going to take you back to the affected picture. Can you see that the contrast has changed the layout of this picture? Now you've got diffusion. Can you see that the diffusion is working a lot in the highlights? If you look there, there's the highlights of the picture. And watch this. When I diffuse it, it's kind of smearing it. If you look there, it's more defined. While there, it's smoothing it out. Now the low trim means you are now working with just the low lights. If you have a look, these highlights are not being affected at all. Look, I'm increasing that, and you can see that it's reduced the effect of the contrast, but only to do with the low lights. If I go to the high trim, can you see now we're only working on the highlights? If you look there, these are the highlights, and look what's happening there. And you see the highlights are changing. Not a lot, but they are changing. Right, then we've got the tint. This is the amount of color. Look at that. It's very saturated. Now, that is totally oversaturated. And if you want to change the hue, look at that. And you see you can go through the spectrum by adjusting the hue. So if you want to have it like, say, the green effect, and then you can reduce the amount of the tint that is overlaid there. Right, so that is what the tint does. And if I put this back... And I put the tint back, you can see it brings me back to the original image. If I put the contrast back to the way it was, that's the way my image was. 